What's up guys, for today's video I'll be doing a breakdown tutorial on how I created Kirby entirely in Blender, from modeling to texturing to rigging. If you'd like to watch the entire process on your own, I have released a time lapse last week showcasing the process. Modeling. I started off by creating Kirby's main body which is composed of a simple sphere, so I started by adding a UV sphere to the scene. I made sure to decrease its resolution though once I added it. I'm building a habit of minimizing my use of polygons as much as possible to create as efficiently as possible. You see, I'm building this Kirby to use for block and animations in the future, so I'd like him to be as efficiently built as possible polygon-wise to reduce lag in the viewport when he'll be in a scene. In any case, in the final render, I'll use the subdivision modifier anyways to have him look as smooth as possible. Once I'm done with the body, I moved on to the arms. I decided to add another sphere to the scene and in edit mode, I would delete the bottom half of that sphere and extruded the length of the arm. I also added a few loop cuts to make sure the arm can bend when animated. As for the feet, I built them from UV spheres as well. To shape them, I decided to use a lattice by parenting the foot to it. Then in edit mode, I would begin to move the lattice's vertices and hence manipulating the foot's shape. When done, I made sure to apply the lattice's modifier in the foot and then deleted the lattice. I made sure to flatten the sole of the foot to make it easier to know when it's leveled against the ground. Lastly, for the eyes, I added a hexagonal circle and stretched it for the oval shaped eyes. I then added a subdivision modifier to smooth it out. Then to stick it on Kirby's body, I added a shrink wrap modifier on the eyes and used Kirby's body as a target. I made sure to increase the body subdivision all the way up to 6 so that the eyes bend along the surface of the sphere as smoothly as possible. I later added a mirror modifier to the eye. When satisfied, I applied the shrink wrap modifier. For the mouth, it was very simple. I created a plane and blocked out the shape of a smile and later added a subdivision modifier and same as the eyes, I shrink wrapped it around Kirby's spherical body and later applied a shrink wrap modifier. Then for the glimmer of the eyes, I did the same as the eyes. I duplicated the eyes and scaled them down and then shrink wrapped them onto the eyes this time. Satisfied with the body's modeling, I moved on to texturing. Texturing. Before any kind of texturing, I made sure all of the objects had correct UVs. Since Kirby's body meshes were simple shapes, I was done very quickly. Texturing Kirby was pretty easy compared to regular human characters because since he's stylized, it doesn't take much details. I made sure however not to give him flat colors and used gradients instead. For his body and his arms, I used a gradient that starts with dark pink at the bottom and moves into a regular pink at the top and for the feet, I went from an intense red at the bottom to an orange hue on top. For the eyes, I essentially copied the coloring he had on the reference image I was using. I decided to use a spherical gradient node and added the different hues of blue and then mixed it with another spherical gradient that was pure black to act as the pupil of the eye. The glimmer of his eyes just had a simple white emission shader. For some reason, some of the UVs were messing up because of the mirror modifier, so I had to apply it like on the eyes, for example. Once the texturing was done, I duplicated the eye and mirrored it on the X global axis. Lastly, for the blush, I decided to simply color it on the gradient pig texture. So I added an empty image in the shader nodes and I mixed it in with the gradient node. In texture paint mode, I then colored in Kirby's blush. Once all of the texturing was done, I decided to bake them all into their own images. Just like the low resolution mesh ID I spoke about before, I'm getting in the habit of being as efficient as possible with my character rigs that also includes texturing. As you probably already know, an image texture takes a lot less computing power to render than a procedural shading node setup. To bake, I used a simple bake add-on which doesn't cost that much to be honest. It saves you a lot of time rather than baking them manually. Once my image textures were baked and applied, I was ready to move on to rigging. Rigging. Just like modeling and texturing, Kirby's simplified look makes him a lot easier to rig than you regular human characters. When it comes to rigging, I always use the Rigify add-on which is packaged for free in Blender. It does have a learning curve, but once you get used to it, it becomes a lifesaver for people who aren't proficient in rigging like I am, but would still like to rig their own characters independently. If you're ever interested to learn how to rig with Rigify, I would recommend checking out CG Dive's YouTube channel. This is where I learned it from, and the link to his channel will be in the description below. Since rigging is a complicated topic on its own, I won't be diving into the nitty gritty of it all, and I'll assume you know some of the basics of it, but if you have any questions about the process, Leave it in the comment section and I will answer you as fast as I can. It all begins with adding a bone in the scene and checking in front in the property settings to make sure all the bones will be viewed through the meshes. Then in edit mode I deleted the bone so I can start adding from the Rigify samples instead that are viewed in the data properties panel. For the main body bone I went with the basic super copy bone sample and made sure to place the head of the bone at the bottom of Kirby's body as this is where the center of gravity is located. 
For the arms, I added a limbs.arm sample and aligned to his arm. Then I added the dot L suffix to each of the bones' names to symmetrize them to the right side. I then made sure to parent the arm bones to the main body bone. I'm going to skip the feet just for now because the initial rig setup that I had for them didn't sit right with me and I'll show you how I made them at the end in a few moments. For the eyes, I decided to rig the glimmer of the eyes only. The regular eyes will be rigged with the main body bone, same for the mouth. That being said, for the glimmer of the eyes, I duplicated the main body's bone and rotated it and put it in place of the glimmer. I then symmetrized it on the right. What's special about the glimmer of the eyes are two things. One, I made sure to keep the glimmer meshes shrink wrapped to the eyes, so they don't stick out if I move their bones too far, and two, I added a shrink wrap constraint on their control bones so that they don't move outside of the eyes' vicinity as well. This way the bones aren't too erratic and feel more intuitive to use. Once I was done, I generated the rig from my bone setup and ended up with a final rig. I did some minor adjustments like weight painting and adding in custom shapes and voila! I now have a fully rigged Kirby, except I wasn't happy with the feet setup, so I decided to redo it the next day. For the feet, I ended up adding a chain of two bones, one, of the, one for the feet and one for the toes. Then I wanted the option to make the feet either follow or not follow the main body, so I added a child of constraint on the feet's controllers and parented them to the main body's bone instead. Within those constraints is the option to play with the influence gauge, where I get to turn on or off the feet following the main body. So to make it a bit more efficient to use, I added two more bones, one representing each foot, placed them on top of Kirby's and used them as drivers for the influence gauge of the child love constraints. Just like a light switch, when I move it up or down, it turns the feet follow feature on or off. And there you go. That is how I created Kirby from scratch entirely in Blender. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Peace.